All right, today we're going to look at polynomial long division. So question two, use polynomial long division and write the polynomial in the form p of x is equal to d of x, q of x plus r of x. So here we have p of x and we have d of x right here. So we need to find q and r and the way we find q and r is using the long division. So set up our long division. So this will be x squared minus 2x minus 1. And we put in our long division polynomial. So the thing you always want to remember with long division is you want to make sure you have your placeholders. Because if you look at what we have right now, we are missing the square term. So we're going to stick in a 0x squared plus 10x minus 3. So when we do long division, what we want to do is we want to find some number that I can multiply by x squared to give 5x to the fourth. So that's going to be 5x squared. And now that we have the 5x squared, we multiply all three terms on the left-hand side by it. So I'll end up with 5x squared times x squared, which is 5x to the fourth. 5x squared times a minus 2x, which will be a minus 10x cubed and then a 5x squared times a minus one, which will be a minus 5x squared. And now the next step here is what we do is we change the sign. So change sign and add. So this will be a minus plus plus. So this will be a zero here. We get left with a 6x cubed plus 5x squared plus 10x minus three. And now we do the process all over again. I want something I can multiply x squared by to give me 6x cubed. So that's going to be plus 6x. Now I do the same thing. I'll multiply the 6x by the x squared, the minus 2x, and the minus 1. So 6x times x squared is 6x cubed. 6x times a minus 2x will be a minus 12x squared. And then 6x times a minus 1, which will be a minus 6x. And same thing before, change signs and add. So this will be a minus plus plus again. So 0 here in the cubic term. 12x squared plus a 5x squared is a 17x squared. Then plus 10 plus 6 is a 16x minus 3. And now what we want to do is something times x squared that gives me 17x squared. Well, 17. We'll do that. So this will be a 17x squared. And a 17 times a minus 2x, which will be a minus 34x. And then a 17 times a minus 1, which will be a minus 17. And just like before, we want to change the signs and add. So this becomes a minus plus and plus. So notice the squares cancel again. We get a 16 plus 34x, which will be a 50x, and then a 17 minus 3, which would be a 14. Now the thing here is we have an x squared here and a x. That's as far as we can go. And what happens here is this is our remainder. So this is my r of x. And that is my q of x. So this is now saying I can write 5x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 10x minus 3 is equal to my dividend. So, sorry, divisor, sorry, x squared minus 2x minus 1 times my quotient, which will be a 5x squared plus 6x plus 17 plus my remainder. And my remainder is going to be 50x plus 14. That's it. Uh, looking at question four, same concept. Use polynomial long division and write the polynomial in the same form. So again, as before, set up our equation. And just like that, we are missing this square in the linear term, so we want to put in placeholders for that. So 2x cubed plus a 0x squared plus a 0x minus 4. 
And then it's just the same process again. What number can I multiply x by to give me 2x cubed? Well, 2x squared. And same thing as before, I'll multiply 2x squared by x, give me a 2x cubed. 2x squared times a minus 5 will be a minus 10x squared. And I change the signs and add. So this becomes 10x squared plus 0x. I keep that placeholder, minus 4. And now we go to our next step. Um, something times x to give me a 10x squared. Well, that's going to be a 10x. So 10x times x squared times x will give me a 10x squared, sorry. 10x times a minus 5 will be a minus 50x. And I change the signs and add. So this will be a 0 here in the square term. And I get left with a plus 50x minus 4. And then the last step is the same as before. What can I multiply x by to give me 50x? Well, 50. So 50 times x is 50x, and then 50 times a minus 5 is a minus 250. And I change the signs and I add. And what do I see happens when I add? Well, the z x terms cancel out, and I'm left with 250 minus 4, which is a minus 240. Sorry, a plus 246. And just as before, we look at this and it's like, oh, I have a square, a linear term here. I have a constant here. So this is my remainder. This is now my quotient. So this says I can now write 2x cubed minus 4 is equal to my divisor. So x minus 5 times my quotient, which is 2x squared plus 10x plus 50 plus my remainder, and my remainder is plus 246, and that's it. Now we'll start looking at simplicial division. So question six says, for the polynomial p of x being 2x to the fourth minus 10x plus seven, use the remainder theorem to find p of seven. So just remainder theorem says, if I do simplicial on some, you know, polynomial here and I get some answers back. So at the very end, I'll have this remainder after all this long division. Well, and say that's why. That's just saying after I do simplicial here, the remainder is really the value I get when I plug in A into my polynomial. So going with an example here, we're looking at p of 7, where p of x is 2x to the fourth minus 10x plus 7. So I'm doing 7. And then just like with long division, you want to put in placeholders for the missing terms. So for simplicial, we just put the coefficients for each degree. So this will be 2. We don't have a cubic. We don't have a square. We have a minus 10 here and a 7. So what happens when we do simplicial? We immediately bring down the first term, so this becomes a two. And then we just take seven times two is 14. And then we add zero plus 14, which is 14. Then we take seven times 14, which is a 98. And we say zero plus 98 is 98. Then I take seven times 98, which is 686. And I say minus 10 plus 686 is 676. And then the last step is 7 times 676, which is 4,732. And I say 7 plus 4,732 is 4,739. So here, this is my remainder. But the remainder theorem says that P of seven is actually gonna be 4,739. And we'll see, if you don't understand why this happens, we'll actually see it a little bit later on why this is what it is. Going on to number eight, we want for the polynomial P of X being minus eight X cubed minus seven X plus three. Use the remainder theorem to find P of minus four. So same thing as before, minus four. 
and we pick off our coefficient. So a minus eight, we don't have a square, so we put a zero, a minus seven, and a three. So first step is, is I immediately bring down the minus eight. And I say minus four times a minus eight is 32. And then I say zero plus 32 is 32. Now the next step is a minus four times 32, which is a minus 128. And I say seven plus a minus 128 is a minus 135. And then the last step is minus four times a minus 135, which is 540. And then we add those two together to get 543. And again, this is my remainder. And by the remainder theorem that says P of minus four is equal to 543. Question 10 is a little different. We wanna find a polynomial with zeros at X is equal to minus four, X equal two and X equals three. And also contains the point minus one minus four. Since we don't have anything about the degree of the polynomial and we just wanna hit these zeros, so as if we have x equals a is a zero, that's if and only if x minus a is a factor. So we have three zeros. So I can say my polynomial has to factor in some way as x plus four for the minus four zero, x minus two for the two zero, and then x minus three for the three zero. And what I want to do is I'm just going to stick this A on here, and the A is going to be a vertical stretch factor. And what we're going to do is we're going to stretch our polynomial with those zeros to hit minus 1, minus 4. And so all we need to do is find A. And we can just find A by plugging in minus 1, minus 4. So this is minus 4 is equal to A times a minus one plus four, a minus one minus two, and then a minus one minus three. So this is A is equal to a three times a minus three times a minus four, which is a minus four. And going on, we actually see here this says minus four is equal to what? nine times four, which is 36, so 36A, which says A is a minus one ninth. So this says my final answer, I'll do it in blue, is gonna be F of X is equal to a minus one ninth. And then my linear, my factors, X plus four times an X minus two times an X minus three. And that's it. For question 12, we wanna ask is x minus two a factor of the polynomial x cubed minus 10 x squared plus 41 x minus 500. So x minus two is a factor if and only if, uh, if we have x equals two as a zero, which is just saying, if we do simplicial on two, or sorry, synthetic division, synthetic division, wrong word, synthetic division, on two has remainder zero. So this is just saying if I wanted, if I do synthetic on two and if I have a zero at the end, it's yes. If I don't, the answer is no. So this will be putting our coefficients, a one, a minus 10, 41, and a minus 500. So for synthetic, immediately bring down the one. Two times one is two. Minus 10 plus two is a minus eight. Uh, two times a minus eight is a minus 16. 41 plus a minus 16 is 25. 
and then two times 25 is 50, then minus 50 plus five, fit minus 500 plus 50 is minus 450, and that is the remainder. So remainder theorem says P of two is minus 450, which means it's no, it's not a factor. For 14 and 16, we're gonna consider the polynomial P of X being 3X to the fourth minus 5X cubed minus 17X squared plus 13X plus six. We wanna use the rational zeros theorem. Verify X equals three and minus two are zeros. Rewrite the polynomial as a product of linear factors and 16 is sketch the polynomial. So the rational zeros theorem is just saying take the divisors of the constant and then divide them by the divisors of the leading coefficient. So what we need to do is we need to find the divisors of six and three. And we see divisors of six can be plus or minus six, plus or minus three, plus or minus two, plus or minus one. And then the divisors of three can be plus or minus three and plus or minus one. So what we wanna do for A is we wanna go through every possible combination I can pick. So the plus and minus six and threes, plus and minus six and ones, the threes and the threes and ones, so on and so forth. So what happens is we end up we can take plus or minus six over plus or minus three, which gives me plus or minus two. I can take plus and minus six over plus or minus one, which will give me plus or minus six. And that takes care of the six. Then for three, I can take plus or minus three over plus or minus three, which is plus or minus one. And then I can take plus or minus three over plus or minus one, which is plus or minus three. And then the threes are done. And then for the two, I can do plus or minus two over three. And then two over one can give me plus or minus two. So the twos are done. And then the last one is plus or minus one over plus or minus three. So plus or minus one third. And we already have the plus or minus one over plus or minus one. So these are all possible zeros. of p of x according to the rational zeros theorem so you notice the more divisors we have the more possible zeros we have so verify x equals three minus two are zeros of p of x it's, you can pick your preference on how you want to do this easy way is synthetic division so in using the remainder theorem so we'll do that. So three into three minus five minus 17, 13 and six. So immediately bring down the three. Three times three is nine. Nine plus or minus five is four. Three times four is 12. 12 plus or minus 17 is a minus five. 3 times a minus 5 is a minus 15. Uh, 13 plus a minus 15 is a minus 2. And 3 times a minus 2 is six, is a minus 6. And minus 6 plus 6 is 0. So that is the proof we want. But the thing here is this actually gives us something else from when we do synthetic division. This gives me a way to rewrite my polynomial, which says if I can now rewrite P of X, as x minus three. And then this right here, this part right here, gives me the coefficients for a cubic degree polynomial. So this will be three x cubed plus four x squared minus five x minus two. And then plus remainder of zero. But okay, so we checked that x equals three is a zero. Now we wanna look at minus two. 
And minus two is not going to be a zero of this x minus three. It's going to rather be a zero of this part. So we can actually do synthetic on that part now instead. So this will be a minus two. And then we'll have three, four, minus five, minus two. All right, so let's do synthetic now. So bring down the three. Minus two times three is a minus six. Four plus a minus six is a minus two. A minus two times a minus two is four. Minus five plus four is one. A minus one, sorry. A minus two times a minus one is two. And then a minus two plus two is zero. And that again is our proof that this is indeed a zero. And it, just like before, this gives me a nice way to rewrite my factorization. So I still have this x minus 3 out in front. And now it says I can rewrite this underlying part as x plus 2. And then this gives me the coefficients of a quadratic. So 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. And now this is the thing. We need to be able to factor this. And once we factor this quadratic, we'll actually have all of C done. The nice thing to see here is we look at the coefficients. We have a 3, minus 2, minus 1, which is 0. And that happens when I plug in x equals 1, right? So if I was to do long division on 1, I would be able to factor this polynomial out. And this would give me my final factorization. So 3 minus 2 minus 1, bring down the 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Minus 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So indeed, it is a 0. So this now says I can write this as x minus 3, x plus 2. And this, this, since it's 1, will be x minus 1. And this gives me now a thing for a linear term, which will be 3x plus 1. And that gives me the complete factorization for part C. Now, the other thing we want to do is sketch our polynomial. And we can do that rather simply. Uh, and so let's draw our graph real quick. So the thing here is if we look down at this factorization, it gives us our zeros. So this says my zeros here. I'm going to do that in green. Zeros are what? a minus two, a minus one third, one and three. And now what we wanna do is look at what we've done in the past. So our polynomial here is even degree. and has a positive leading coefficient. So what do we know about its end behavior? Well, we know its end behavior has to be something like this on both by our end behavior. So now all we need to do is find possible numbers that sit in between, say, minus 2 and minus 1 third minus one third and one, and one and three. Uh, we do have some nice ones to pick from. Um, we can look at P of zero, that's six. So we know P of zero is somewhere over here. So we have zero, six. And then we just need to pick some numbers. Um, it doesn't particularly matter which, just how accurate you wanna be. So P of minus one, would be a minus one minus three, minus one plus two, a minus 
I'm okay. What I'm just doing is I'm using this factorization here. So minus one minus three is a minus four. Minus one plus two is a one. A minus one times a minus one. Minus one minus one is a minus two. And then minus one times three is a minus three plus one is a minus two. So this is minus, it's four times a minus four, which is a minus 16. So we have a zero all the way down, a point down here at, minus one, minus 16. And granted, this again is not a very accurate representation. This is just kind of a sketch. So we kind of have to have it all connecting this way. And then the last thing we need to do is pick a number between one and three. Well, two works. So two minus three is a minus one. Two plus two is four. Two minus one is one. And then three times two is six plus one is seven. So this is a minus 28. So I have two minus 28 as my other point. So my graph looks something like that. Now let's look at question 18. We want to solve x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 36 is equal to zero. Now this is a fourth degree polynomial, but even though it's a fourth degree, it's behaving like a quadratic. And what I mean by that is if I make a substitution, make substitution, of saying let y equal x squared, this allows me to rewrite my polynomial as y squared minus 13y plus 36 is equal to zero. And we can factor that now. So I need two numbers that add to minus 13 and multiply to 36. And those are nice numbers of not minus nine and minus four. So this says I can factor this now as y minus nine, y minus four. If you don't understand how we got those numbers, your other option is going quadratic formula and you'd get the same ones. But by our substitution though, this is y is x squared. So this is really x squared minus nine x squared minus four is equal to zero. And now these two things here are difference of perfect squares. So this is saying x squared minus b squared is the same thing as x plus b, x minus b. So using that, we can actually completely factor these as x plus three, x minus three, x plus two, x minus two is equal to zero. And this says, well, I have a product of things that equals zero, so one of them has to be zero. So my four solutions are x can be plus or minus three or plus or minus two, and that's it. Uh, going on to the next one, we want to solve 4x cubed minus 4x squared is equal to x minus one. That is the same thing as solving 4x cubed minus 4x squared minus x plus one is equal to zero. And the thing here is look at the coefficients. What happens here? We have a four minus four minus one plus one is equal to zero. And that happens when x equals one. So this says x equals one is a zero. So what we can do is quite a synthetic division. So one, four minus four minus one, one. So, so we bring down the four, one times four is four, minus four plus four is zero, one times zero is zero, minus one plus zero is minus one, one times a minus one is minus one, minus one plus 
one is zero. So this is indeed a zero, but this says now I can write four x cubed minus four x squared minus x plus one as x minus one since that's my zero times this thing, which is now quadratic, which is four x squared plus zero x minus one. And now the thing here is this is also a difference of perfect squares. And the other way you can see the difference of perfect squares is if you have a squared x squared minus b squared, that is ax plus b, ax minus b. So in our terms, a here is going to be 2, and b is just going to be 1. So this is now saying I can really actually factor this as x minus 1 times 2x plus one, 2x minus one. And we know this is all supposed to be equal to zero by our thing. And since we have the product of things equaling zero, one of them has to be zero. So it's one of the factors. So our three solutions can be one. Then from here we get a minus one half. And then from here we have one half. So we have three zeros here and three solutions. And that's it. Question 22 says we want to solve 3x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 17x squared plus 13x plus 6 and find when it's less than zero. And the hint is, well, we've already graphed it in question 16. So when is our graph less than zero? Well, or under the x-axis, well, namely, between minus two and minus one third, and one and three. And since this is, no, this is just strict, strict implies we use parentheses here. So this says we'll be between minus two and minus one third, or one to three, and that's it. 24 is we want to find 4x cubed minus 4x squared when that is less than x minus 1. And really, that's the same thing as me solving 4x cubed minus 4x squared minus x plus 1 is less than 0. And the thing is, is we already solved this. This was question 20. So from 20, we saw this factored as x minus 1. 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. And when is that less than 0? And all I'm going to do is reorder these as 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1, x minus 1 is less than 0. And there's a bunch of different ways you can graph this, or you can use what we've done last week with the number line method. So number line method, remember, we place our zeros down, which we found last in the last sec question. And we just want to test points that sit in between these. And since we already have it in factored form, we can just really just look at the signs. So we want to pick a number less than minus a half. We can think, well, minus 10. So this would be 2 times a minus 10 plus 1, which is negative. 2 times a minus 10 minus 1 is negative. And then a minus 10 times a minus, a minus 10 minus 1 is negative as well. So I have three negatives, which make a positive. Um, now I need something between minus one half and one half. Sorry, uh, three minuses make a minus. So that is a minus sign there. Uh, then we want something between minus a half and one half. Well, we can think zero here. So now we have two times zero plus one, which is positive. Two times zero minus one is negative. 
and zero minus one is negative. So plus times two negative is positive. Pick something between one half and one. So let's say three fourths. And this is the benefit of this way of doing number line method. So two times three fourths plus one, or the fact that this change sign just stays positive here. Now two times three fourths minus one is now positive since I passed that zero. And then three fourths minus one's negative. So two positive times a negative is negative. And then the last thing is something bigger than one, say 10. So two times 10 plus one is positive. Two times 10 minus one is positive and 10 minus one is positive. So three pro this product of three positives is positive. So we were interested in when this was less than zero, well, that happens in this case, in this case, and note we have strict again. So strict means we use our parentheses. So our solution is minus infinity to minus one half, union one half to one, and that's it. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them in the discussion board. Have a nice day.